What's up, guys? It's Federico. Welcome back to the 36th ever episode of the Ice Coffee Hour. And so far, we've made $34,714. I thought we made more than no, that. No, we're at 34. Think we made more. Why was I thinking 37 well, hold on, hold on. this entire time? We've got to congratulate you for yeah. one of the most flawless introductions to the podcast. Didn't waste a beat. You just. No, I right said, this is what you're going to say. And you're just like, all right, here we go. And you just said it. Well, I didn't even how know many started. YouTubers do you guys. I mean, I, I watch your main channel and yeah. I watch your second channel, but. I do this for a living. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, so, so, so everyone as, else. Every you, person we have on is a YouTuber. And they oh, can't, really? Yeah. Well, that just goes to show my lack of preparation for this video. So that, I was, that was impressive. Yeah. But I think with your videos, you don't script them. No, never. Wow. I, there's a little bit of cutting. By the way, guys, $34,714.90 is what I made on like my first four years of YouTube. Combined. Really? Well, I'm a much yeah. smaller channel. I'm about to hit. Hundred thousand. That's at Federico Talks Watchers. Help yeah. me out. Um, but yeah, I mean, now this year it's it's doing a lot better. But yeah. it took a while. Yeah. First, we have to thank this video sponsor, Privacy.com. Okay, everyone, listen up to get some free money. I'm gonna put you onto something I have been using a ton lately, and that is Privacy.com. Isn't it super annoying when you're required to put in credit card information to access a website? Do you ever sign up for free trials and worry that you will forget to cancel before they charge you? Is it ever difficult for you to unsubscribe or stop paying for an online service? Privacy.com lets you buy things online using virtual cards instead of having to use your real ones, protecting your identity and and bank information on the internet. Privacy is absolutely incredible. All you have to do is link a card to your account and then you can create 12 single use debit cards per month that you can set specific limits to and cancel whenever. So when you're buying anything online, the seller will not have your credit card information. This is huge in protection from fraud. If you go with the privacy premium plan, you can actually get cash back and rewards alongside all of the other perks that come with this plan. Head to privacy.com slash ICH and sign up for an account. New customers will automatically get $5 to spend on your first purchase. Go to privacy.com slash ICH and sign up now. As always, the link will be in the description. Thank you, Privacy, for sponsoring this episode and back to the podcast. Let me introduce you because this is really exciting for me to meet you. <laughs> I've been watching your channel for maybe two years, two and a half oh, years wow. now, for a while. Uh, and I was interested in your channel because you talked watches. Mm -hmm. And I love watches and you, you sell watches, you're involved in watches. And I think they're really interesting one because aesthetically, I think they could be very beautiful, mm -hmm. but also for an investment, they retain their value. Some of yes. them go up a lot in value. I've been trying to convince Jack to get a Submariner. He's shaking his head. He's saying no, but I Double think. Double-edged yeah. sword. Mm, That's all I'm going to we'll, say. We'll, we'll talk about that shortly. That's my man right there. That's my man. <laughs> for anybody, I think, who's interested in watches or who wants to get into watches or who is at all curious about maybe alternative investments where you could mm -hmm. make money or if you have cash that's sitting in an account to put it in a watch, this is your guy. And we're going to learn a lot today about, about investing and buying watches and you're going to react to uh, my watch collection. I brought okay. a few watches. All right. So uh, no holds barred, though. No holds barred. No. Um, but, you know, I, I do appreciate you having me on because honestly, I'm not just saying this for the show. Mm. I have actually been watching you not quite two years, but well. definitely over a year. Um, and like, yeah, I'm a YouTuber, but this is a whole other level for me. <laughs> so cool. um, I don't know. I'm kind of honored to be here and meet you guys. Thank you so much for the opportunity. You're welcome. How did you get into selling watches? All right. So this story was... We're doing the brutal honesty. Brutal thing. honesty. All right. So my parents were jewelers, right? And jewelry designers. It was not really my thing as a kid. My older brother was actually sitting somewhere over there. Got me into watch. He was obsessed with watches around the age of 18. I was about 10, 11. So he'd always like call me over to take a look at the stuff online. I yeah. never really cared. But then I turned 18 and <laughs> I didn't really know what to do with my life. I wasn't a great student. I mean, I went to college. Decided it wasn't for me, moved back home. And then my mom was like, all right, well, go get a job. You know, like, go do something. And I walked down Fifth Avenue uh, with a stack of resumes. Walked to The Gap, Banana Republic, Cartier, Starbucks, Gucci, whatever. Every single store on Fifth mm -hmm. Avenue. And the manager at Cartier was like, well, we're looking for, like, a sales associate for Christmas in the watch department. Do you know anything about watches? I'm like, well, actually... A little bit. Mm -hmm. He's like, all right, sell me this pen. 
You know? No. Is that it, really no, what he, he did? did. Who does he think no. he is? Huh? It's literally, he took it from a movie. There's a famous movie where that happened. Yeah, yeah Wolf I'm of not Wall Street. This up. Is it, well, this well, was before it, Wolf No, wasn't that the, uh, the, the stock with the Gordon Gecko? Uh, what was Maybe, it? The, actually. I don't know. I think it was I Remember that. Jordan Belfort had like something Yeah, he did. That was, that was Wolf of Wall Street, but I think it was... Um, well, this was 2009, so it was before yeah. Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> wow. Um, and I just worked out, and he gave me the job, 12 bucks an hour. And by the sixth week, I was the second out of like 60 salespeople in the whole Fifth Avenue store. Why? Um, Just because you knew about watches? Well, no, it had nothing to do with knowing about watches because I didn't know anything about watches. I then dedicated my life to spending like the 12 hours of not, the 12 non working hours a day I had mm -hmm. to reading timezone.com. Like that's when it started. But no, it's, it's literally just about being, not to toot my own horn, but charming and conversational. <laughs> you are pretty charming, and, yeah. I must and admit. Just, just yeah. speak, you know, just yeah. making people feel comfortable. There's nothing worse than walking into one of these stuffy boutiques yeah. and, and it being so rigid. I mean, you have to have a little decorum, but it's all about connecting with the person. Yeah. You connect with the person, they'll buy anything. Be a good real estate agent. You would be. You're a very good conversationalist. <laughs> as soon as you walked in the room, you started talking. Very easy, very easy to talk to you. Yeah. Well, thank you. You, I, make, I you make the air comfortable. <laughs> well, you guys are making me blush if I could blush. Very charming. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, because okay. honestly, if you go in any of these boutiques today, most of the salespeople are in their 50s. You know, they're tired. They're over yeah. it. Buy something and get out. I was not even 20 years old. Like, mm. I really wanted to make an impression. And, you know, it worked. Yeah. <laughs> And then what happened after that? So how, how much were you making back then? Can we ask that? Yeah, it was uh, $12 an hour, 1% commission. That's it? Um, well, it 1%. was a holiday because I was a holiday associate. So I was getting paid exactly mm. half what everybody was. Wow. Everybody was on, I guess, 25 and 2%. But I probably made, I don't remember, honestly, but probably about, I was making probably like $65,000. That's pretty good. That's good. You know, in, in that job. Back, yeah. Um, and then I went to work for another store uh, called Torno. Was not for me, okay. particularly. And then I went to work for Wempy, which free plug to Wempy, greatest watch store in the world, as far as I'm concerned, on Fifth Avenue. Best trained sales staff, the nicest guys, coffee, champagne. They treat everybody like royalty, whether you're buying a strap or a million dollar Patek Philippe. They taught me everything I know. So if my old boss is watching me, thank you. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, I did, I did, it was basically all retail, and then, uh, and then I moved into corporate. What do you mean moved into corporate? So I was a retail sales associate, mm -hmm. and then I just didn't want to be behind the counter, you know, for my whole life, which sounds dramatic because it was only about five years back, back mm -hmm. then. Um, and then I applied for a job at the Richemont Group, which is a company that owns a ton of watch brands, Vacheron Constantin, Cartier, Panerai, mm -hmm. uh, all of those. And there was a brand called Piaget. They were looking for in a wholesale uh, sales manager, which basically my job was to sell the store their watches. So instead of the customer being my, my customer, the stores were my customer. So I got that job and I was the youngest sales rep in the US at the time. Um, traveled the US trying to open doors, open mm -hmm. jewelers to sell Piaget. Uh, I was going extremely well. Um, I don't know if you know this, but about 80% of those sales back then were actually Chinese tourism. Mm. Um, it was a great way to launder money. <laughs> uh, so what would they do? They just bring cash, just bring buy cash. a watch, and then take the watch back with them? And yeah, give it to like their local party official as a gift or something. Then the government changed. Yeah. Um, Hu Jintao left. Xi Jinping is the new president. Uh, crackdown and watch sales went down the toilet quicker than the Great Depression. Mm. Um, I knew the writing was on the wall, so I decided to leave before. And in fact, looking back at Piaget, nobody I worked with works there anymore. I was the first one to leave. I decided to leave on my own terms, but good decision in hindsight because you know no one's there. And then I was unemployed. I was bored. I decided to start talking about watches on YouTube talking about watches, talking about watches a couple of years, no real money making coming out of it, but it was fine. But people would ask me, hey, Federico, would you buy this? Or where can I buy this? And I decided to, you know, how do I monetize this? 
So, you know, uh, long story short, a few more steps, but I started DelrayWatch.com, mm-hmm. which is my website. And I started it on an investment with a partner. You know, my partner, John, was also on YouTube. We started with $4,000. All right, that, that was our investment. And I'm not going to tell you exactly what the revenue is, but it's, it's multi, multi, multi millions of dollars per year. That was a good $4,000 investment. Um, now, yeah. now <laughs> if you, why did you have a partner in the beginning? Um, because I'm good at watches. Mm-hmm. Okay, I love watches. Is what I do. I don't do technology. I don't do websites. I don't do credit card processing. I don't do legal. And John, who was a CT, you know, was a CTO consultant for a big watch company at the time, you know, was a good friend of mine. And you know, I told him my idea, and he's like, "Let's let's, let's do it." You know, we literally we were having. Tacos and tequila. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, I had this idea. We should do it. And he's like, absolutely. I'm on board. And three weeks later, it started. And um, I mean, listen, first year was tough. but And it still is. We're a small company. You know, we're, we're not, you know, like uh, we're not crowning caliber or, or Rolex or anything. But yeah, it started with $4,000. That's all it took. And how <laughs> yeah. long ago was that? Just under four years ago. How many employees do you have now? Full time, we have well. There's me and John, Jacob, who is our office assistant, Jonathan Hotchman, our director of operations, Carlos Ramos, our photographer, Hans, our watchmaker, and then so I don't whatever that is plus an extra watchmaker uh, for repairs on the side because we have a lot of demand, and then a part time accountant and the part time lawyer. So how does your business work? Do you? Try to find good deals on watches. You buy them and then you sell them. So yes, okay. in a nutshell, you kind of got it. But there's a couple of twists that I feel that we do that nobody else does. That's it. First of all, we're watch collectors first. Me and John are watch lovers. All right, every watch dealer sells Rolex, Patek Philippe, and Audemars Piguet. That's boring to me because that's everybody does that. Don't get me wrong. There's some Pateks I love, mm-hmm. some APs I love, but there's so much more out there. So we started by buying the stuff that not a lot of people knew about, like my favorite brand, H. Moser. I'm pretty convinced I sell more H. Moser than most H. Moser stores in the U.S. at the moment. I don't think I've heard of that brand. Um, well, there's one that I'm going to show you that I brought All with right, me. Okay. Um, you know, Gerard Perigo, mm-hmm. Zenith, Breitling, Cuervo y Sabrinos, um, just the stuff that's not in the big three. And nobody else was selling it. So when we started selling it, if people wanted it, we were one of the few places you could buy it. Because every watch dealer was scared to invest in that kind of stock. Because, oh, who's going to buy? You know, it's scary. They'd rather buy a Rolex and flip it and make a couple hundred dollars. Whereas to me, you know, I found that boring. So I started stocking the stuff I like. And then obviously I started promoting it on my YouTube channel. And my YouTube channel is all watch geeks. So they mm. loved the stuff I was stocking because they were also bored of the same old, same old. So, yeah, that's pretty much. Why can't you just go to West Time and say, hey, I want to buy this H. Moser. Uh, mm-hmm. Moser. What is it, Moser? H. Moser. Mm. Why, why can't you just go to West Time and say that and then they just go and source it and sell it to you for. Well, first you have more. to be an authorized dealer. Um, so I don't know if West Time is, but they very well may be. But that's where the investment part of watches comes in. Mm. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that watches are a good investment. Watches are not necessarily a good investment, but they're a fantastic hobby where you can very easily not lose money. It's a great way to have a ton of fun, park some money, and if you do it right, you can make money or not necessarily lose money. There's very few expensive hobbies that one can say about that. And Moser, if you buy a Moser at West Time and you go sell it in three years because you're tired of it, that $35,000 watch is worth eight grand. You go to Delray Watch and you buy it pre owned, not to plug my own business again, it's $9,000. Yeah. So when you go to sell it back to me, it's $8,000. Or maybe the market went up and you get your 9000 back, or you make, or maybe I'll give you 10000 depends when you sell it. But let somebody else take the depreciation. You know, the pre owned watch in good condition from a well known dealer 
is just as good as one that's brand new. But really quick, you guys, we have a word from our sponsor, Audible. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment, audiobooks, and they recently added podcasts. I'm someone who values constantly learning new things, and Audible is an amazing platform that offers over 500,000 audio titles. Audible offers spoken word entertainment, ranging from celebrity memoirs and motivational speeches to original content from celebrity creators and thousands of binge-worthy podcasts. I'm way too busy right now to divert all of my attention to a book and read, so instead I just put on Audible when I'm doing my daily runs or in my car driving. I am currently listening to Misbehaving, which is a book by Richard Thaler on behavioral economics and its effect on us. I know I definitely would not have enough time to read this book if it weren't for Audible. And guess what, guys? You're in luck because right now you can get in on the President's Day event. You are getting in on one of the best offers of the year. It's only $9.95 a month for your first six months. When I signed up for Audible about eight months ago, I was paying way more than this. So if you want to check that out, visit audible.com slash iced coffee or text iced coffee to 500 500. It's as easy as that. Just text iced coffee to 500 500. Also, if you want more information, as always, check the description. And with that said, back to the podcast. Now, you mentioned for Jack, because I've been telling Jack, mm-hmm. get a Submariner. Get it. I, I think that would be a good watch for Jack to get that would only go up and value. You said that's a double edged sword. Why? Well, I think on a Submariner, it's a safe investment. Um, it's a great first watch if you can afford it. Uh, Jack can afford it. First off, I cannot afford it. <laughs> Second off, I, I, I agree with you. I don't think that you can justify it as an investment. And that would be the only reason you why know, I would get a watch. I'm going to disagree with you here. I think a Submariner, historically speaking, mm-hmm. has only gone up in value. But it's going to be one of those things where even if we're best friends in the world... I can't help you with because a pre-owned Submariner sells more than a, than a new one because they're sold out everywhere. So is it, listen, if you have the money to responsibly afford it, you're not, you know, you're not going to lose at, at least in the market, at least historically based on the past 10 years of data, you can't but necessarily. Why, how much do they cost? It, like what's that? It's, you're probably going to say seven, seventy five hundred. Right mm, now. Are we talking like the new ceramic version? No. Or like, like the, what would you advise? I'd for say me? I'd say going on like Chrono twenty four, going mm-hmm. on eBay, getting like a a fifteen year old Submariner. So if you go with the aluminum version, which I like, um, you know, it's it's made significantly worse, but it's more charming. Mm-hmm. You know, like seventy five hundred, maybe mm-hmm. eight grand. If you go with the new aluminum version, you're probably talking like. 10, 10 and a half. Why so much? Why have they gone up so much in value? All of them have. You know, um, I'm not a huge fan of Rolex. I, I personally find them boring, even though I do own one. I own two, actually. Why? Because they're a marketing machine. I mean, it's a status symbol. It's the it thing to have. Uh, it's a great watch. Nothing against the watch. But whenever you walk into a Rolex boutique and they laugh at you, you know, like, oh, do you have the Samariner? And they just throw their head back and mm-hmm. laugh. And call security. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the reason why. Because they're sold out everywhere. It's one of those things where it, it is it is what it is. Um, I mean, the Submariner was worn by James Bond. You know, or before Omega, mm. there was the Submariner. Before the Submariner, there was the Explorer when Ian Fleming wrote the books. So it represents this, like, cool, sophisticated machismo where you buy a sub, you kind of feel like James Bond. It's... It, it's also one of the few sports watches you can wear to the office in a suit and it looks great. Or you could, you know, wear it like with a t-shirt like Graham's mm-hmm. wearing now and it looks great. It's something you can keep for, for the entire, your entire life and, and hand it down. And it's, it's a great, great watch. But as a watch collector and dealer, um, you know, you get over it <laughs> a little bit because it's everywhere. You know, mm-hmm. for Jack, it's perfect. Honestly, it's Told a great you. way. You won't lose money. It's a great way to start. If you never want another watch for the rest of your life, you're set forever. Or it could start a deep and ugly addiction where you spend hundreds of thousands of dollars mm. a year on watches. Hundreds of thousands mm. of dollars. <laughs> I wish I had yeah. hundreds of thousands of dollars to spend. Well, you'll get there eventually. See, yeah, Jack, I do think you should be getting a Submariner. Are we not going to be talking about the, the, the move? Oh, let's talk about the move. Yeah, I know it looks <laughs> like we teleported everyone. We, we saw the, uh, the footage and it looks like very harsh lighting. So we just had to move. And this is actually a better setting, I think, actually. So if you guys like this more, we could do our future podcast like this. Yeah, I like it like this because you see the smash like button, which is mm-hmm. a good reminder to smash like button for the YouTube algorithm. Yeah, but for the Submariner. For the Submariner. Okay. So first off. Just do it. But Just do it. But I don't think just I Just do it. 
seventy five hundred. But also, I feel like I would be, I would be embarrassed to wear it. It's like too nice. It's too nice. It's too nice. I, I think. Really respect that train of thought. Okay, I do because it means you're a humble guy. But everybody deserves to treat themselves. This would be a watch that you would buy that you'd be so proud of that you could pass down to your children, to your grand. This this is an that, heirloom, I like that aspect. But this is an heirloom piece that you're going to buy once mm -hmm. as a sim it, to me that's a symbol of hard work, saving and dedication to get a watch like that. And that's going to be a constant reminder of like look what I was able to accomplish and what I purchased and that's a sign of hard work. That's what I see it as. That and it's still safe. I mean it's yeah. safe if you really don't feel comfortable with it, you can always give me a call. I, I just don't know, like, you. what occasion I would wear it for. Like, do you all wear it out? The, you will wear time. it all the time. That, out? That, yeah, that's a watch. Well, no, in your, only in your house. <laughs> or, like, only you know, like if you're going to, like, I don't know, like, uh, like a party with, yes. like, fancy investor yes. people, I feel like I would wear it no, reasonably everywhere. there. I everywhere. think this, to the, the Samariner is a watch that you could wear while you're putting together IKEA furniture, when mm -hmm. you're playing football with your buds, while you're at the gym, wow. while you're digging in the dirt, when you're in the shower. It's one of those watches that, that I think you could keep on your wrist 24 7 and it will it it's meant to take a beating that watch and it looks better as it patinos with age mm -hmm. i'll tell you what when i get an investment property i think that that would be a good way to how about this yeah i would settle for you getting it on like uh like either a birthday uh or on a milestone, like when the podcast it's a hundred thousand subscribers. Okay, you're like, just picking that because it's within the yes. next five days. <laughs> yeah, Graham. But but that would be like when when the podcast is a hundred thousand. It's probably already next hit a hundred thousand by next the time week. This so by next week, you get the watch. <laughs> All right. I'll tell I, you what. I, th I think on a milestone, that's when you do that. I think Graham's right because it makes it even more special when you finally acquire this piece. To attach a watch with a memory. Is something men have been doing it. Men have been doing for generations, and uh, you know there's something beautiful about that. You know why not? Being a birthday or or when you get your investment property or whatever it may be. I think a milestone. If you could pick a significant milestone that you could remember for the rest of your life, whether it be a specific birthday or buying a rental property. How about or this? The day I retire. No. No. By then the watch is going to be like 40 all right, grand. Okay. Man. All right. So I like the, uh, the investment property because I, I, it's so hard for me to get a watch. Just, I feel like I'm, I understand where you're coming from. Like it holds value, but I feel like I'm still, it's like, I can't view it as an investment. So I, I need to do something. You have more offset. cash sitting in a bank account. Probably just losing money and interest. Here's the thing. You, you don't need an emergency fund. Let's say keep the emergency fund in the watch. Really? Yeah. You can, you know, How like, about the, why don't you, you have deal? like 50 Jack, watches then? I'll make you a deal. What? I, and this is, it's on video. Okay. If you need the cash, I will buy the watch for you at whatever it's worth or the same price you paid. That's a deal. I'll make that same deal. If I need the cash? Yeah. Mm hmm My only Are condition- you serious? I'm serious. My only condition is that I would approve on the price that you pay. Just so you're not paying like 15K for a Submariner. Be like, hey, Graham, you got to pay. If you get a good used Submariner- I will buy it at the same price that you paid for it if you need the money. If I need it? Yes. What if I want it? You're not going to sell it. I, I know Once you. Once you get it, you're not going to sell you're it. Not why, why would you do that? The only I, I, reason you'd get rid of that watch is if you're like, Graham, the stock market just collapsed. My investments are worth nothing. The algorithm just shadow banned all of us. I'm like, I, I need the cash right now. What if I need like an advance for, um, for like, if I want to, make a down payment on then a Then I would give you an advance. I would, I would, I'll pay you ahead of time for, for the money that you're earning. You're always a month ahead of anyway. I know. That I'll pay you that. Very generous. Yeah. I know. He's a good, he's a good boss. Yeah. But I'll do that because that's how confident I am. Because one, I know that the Rolex market is not going to collapse. Whatever price you pay is going to be a fair price. You're going to get a good deal on the watch. I know I'm not going to lose any money. I've always wanted the Submariner 2, never done it, but I would buy yours. So there's no risk. There's no risk. All right, I'll do it in in that case. Yes, peer I'll, pressure. I, it's just like I don't think you realize seven thousand dollars is so much money. Like I think of that in in uh, denominations of like a hundred dollar bills. Do you know how many hundred dollar bills that is? Hold this. How much? Wait, wait, wait. Let Jack hold it. Let Jack hold it, and then just tell so him that how guys, much it's so worth. That is, is this a, watches. That or is, is a shoe bag with about four hundred thousand dollars watches in it. Jack has the best reactions. 
What if Jack just gets up and runs? Can I see it? Can please, I see it? please open it up. And I, I brought a few watches for you guys to look at. Okay. Watches that are great investments and watches that are god awful investments. All right, how about that? Let's see these. We got to segue well, okay, into it. I'm just going to open this up. By the way, Jack, what milestone would you get the rental the property? When you buy a rental property, yes, you will buy a That will happen this year. Federico, would you be able to help Jack get a Submariner? Or is that Just something you could do? Just because it's you? Oh, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> no, the truth is I'm yeah. sold out of Submariners at all, all times. Yeah. But I want to, of course, just give me a call. Give oh me a call. Gosh. We'll figure it out. I'm give so me a call blessed. We'll yeah. Wow. See, look what I'm doing for you, Jack. You have no idea. All right, I'm yeah. going to open this up. All right. Two hands. So there are two watches inside of here. Can I just Please, like, please. Go, go nuts. This is a Girard Perigo Ooh. Perpetual Calendar Chronograph F50. No. Okay, wait. That is... Wait, don't, don't. Let me, let me. Let Jack guess how much that is first, and then let me see it, and then I'll come up with the there's price a, in my mind. Well, there's something special about it. This was only ever originally sold to owners of the original Ferrari F50. If you didn't own an F50, Girard Perigo would not sell you this watch. All right, well, let me, let me see this before Jack That's pretty guess. pretty heavy. Yeah, of solid course. white gold. Oh All right, let God. me see. That is gorgeous, and we'll get some B-roll of this out. Yeah. So it says F50 on it. Mm -hmm. When Ferrari came out with their supercar, the F50, they offered all the original owners of the F50 the option to buy this watch, and they engraved their name on the back. Does that bring down the value to have someone else's name on the back? Usually, yes, but all Ferrari F50 owners are usually somebody special, and that is engraved with Guy La Liberté. Oh, that is. Who is the founder of Cirque du Soleil. No way. So that is originally Guy La Liberté's okay. watch. And, so I'm yeah. going to tell you, I think the difficult part of this watch is that uh, it's hard to comp this. Mm -hmm. And Impossible. it's really just whatever is someone willing to pay for it. I would guess this would be 60. What would you wait? What do you say, Jack? I was going to say, <clears throat> I was going to say 40. But I have no, like I, you're asking me. I have no idea. This could That's, be a watch that I think on the low end would be twenty five on the low end, maybe one twenty at the high end. So original retail, I don't remember, but it was original full retail price was about, if I had to guess, about eighty thousand. Mm -hmm. But Gerard Perigo is not a brand that holds value well. Mm -hmm. So I bought this at Hong Kong in auction, physically at auction. Um, I paid ten thousand. Um, but I can tell you, being that it's an F50, so they made very few, the connection with somebody famous, Guy La Liberté, and then it's Perpetual Calendar Chronograph, I bought this specifically because it's, I think it's worth two to three times what I paid for it. So down the line. So we're kind 30. of right. So about 30, I am 40, selling it yeah. at yeah. Delray Watch. I think it's a touch under 20. Yeah. Because I'm a business. I can't keep everything I right. buy. I have to pay the rent. But if you put in the fact that it's rare, the functionality, the original retail price, I do think it will eventually be worth 30 to 40 again. Yeah. Um, and why, it's yeah. grossly undervalued. Why did, why did this take such a hit? Um, Gerard Perigo was just a grossly mismanaged company. Fantastic watchmaker. Uh, fan, fantastically horrible business people. They don't know how to market. Um, you know, even today, they make some of the best watches on earth heavily discounted. Um, you know, Gerard Perigo is not a good investment if you pay full retail. I'm looking straight into the camera as I say that. I got a question. Um, this may sound really stupid. Please. But what makes a watch, like, good? Because in my opinion, I mean, I know nothing about watches, right? Like, just mm -hmm. so you have an understanding where I'm coming from. What makes this watch so much better than, like, a Rolex? So there's three things, in my opinion, that make a watch good. The first one is just mechanics, right? Engineering and mechanics, which Rolex is, makes fantastic mechanics, and Gerard Perigo does great mechanics as well. Second, which this is well above a Rolex, is finishing. How much time and manual effort went into making that watch? If you open up the movement of this watch, it's all hand engraved, hand finished, under a microscope by a master watchmaker. Whereas Rolex, fantastic watch. It's more of a production line watch. You know, it's, it's, it's made in bulk. Mm -hmm. And then third is something called complications, which in watches refers to functions. So what functions does this have? It is a chronograph, which is a stopwatch. And then on top of that, it's a perpetual calendar, 
which is a calendar that equates for the changes in months, so 30, 31, and 28 days, and for leap year, which this is not digital. This is all done with springs and gears. What, so, what about accuracy? Wouldn't that be like the most important thing? So yes, it was back in the day, but nowadays where iPhones are so accurate, $2 Timex watches with quartz movements are more accurate than this. The beauty in this is it doesn't have a microchip. It doesn't have, right. it's, it's all powered. It's keeping something so accurate all through the power of springs, levers, and that gears, cool. which are hand assembled. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is, you know how hard that is? It's, you know? it's art. It's not. It's art. Yes, it's art. What got me into it was watching a Patek Philippe be built. There's a YouTube video on it. Love that video. The, yeah, the craftsmanship. All right, like, I gotta check it, that out. It makes you want that watch. Like for me, I, I want to Patek on my 50th birthday. Purposely, mm -hmm. I want to wait until I'm 50 because I feel like that's a milestone where you could get a Patek. How much do those cost? Uh, I would say depends. probably the one, maybe about 100 grand. It depends which one yeah. you want. But I mean, this is, there are $5 watches which spank this all over the place in terms of accuracy. It's not about accuracy anymore. It's, it's craftsmanship. And it's appreciating the watch yeah, yeah. No, as an art piece. I get it. This is, it is a very good looking. Yeah. So this is a watch. great example of a watch that was an awful investment, mm -hmm. but that I think is poised to make a very big comeback. Okay. Uh, especially for the price that it's now being offered at. Let's see what else is in here. So obviously what affects the price is the demand, but what, what affects the demand? Is it those three components that you gave? Um, no, no, no. The demand is much more marketing. Mm. People love to have what other people have, <laughs> which is why Rolex is king. You know, Rolex is a great watch, but it's an icon. What makes an icon? The fact that people other people want, want it. it. Um, you know, there's other small brands like this next one you're going to pull out. They make less than 2000 watches a year. They have no idea. Nobody knows what this brand is. It's H Moser, mm -hmm. but it's my favorite brand because I'm a watch nerd and I just love everything that they stand for. Um, but at the same time, it also means it's not a particularly good investment at the moment, but it is something that I think in the future, once their story is a little bit more widespread, uh, should pick yeah. up. What I think with Rolex right now is that I remember back when I was, uh, I don't know, a kid, you'd watch like the, the, the golf tournaments and you'd mm -hmm. see it all with the Rolex crown. Yeah. But now I think you see so many YouTubers that are all buying Rolexes. Yeah. And now it's the cool watch. I think it went from being like this grandpa watch that like, oh, you have a Rolex. Your grandpa might have owned a Rolex in the day. Mm -hmm. Now it's cool. Now it's like all the kids, when they make money, the first thing they do is they buy a Rolex. And every other YouTube video is like, buying a Rolex. I bought a Rolex. Surprising my sister with the Rolex. It gets and it's, fantastic views. Yes. It's it's. <laughs> You know what? It's actually become the Lamborghini of watches. Yeah, yeah. It's the Gallardo yeah, of the watch yeah. world. Oh, yeah. 100%. It gets, it's just, they don't care what Rolex it is. It's a Rolex. I mean, I put so, Rolex in the title. I got 40% more views yeah. without even It's the Lamborghini, about it. yeah. Mm. Let's see what else. What All else right. do we got? Let's see that Moser. This one is not for sale. It is a personal watch of mine. So this is an H. Moser Perpetual Moon Phase with a... Aventurine dial. What is Aventurine? It is a hard gemstone dial that naturally sparkles in the light. Moser only made 50 watches of these in their history. And when I saw it, I had to have it. Wait, so what's I the uh, what's it. the dial at the bottom? That's a is it moon phase? That is a moon phase. So, so you could track where the moon... Exactly. And which is not a particularly useful complication, but it is a... Well, it's I, cool. I, I call it romantic, right? It harkens yeah. back to... When things like that were useful, I mean, I don't never need to know when the phases of the moon are, but if I'm going to have something mechanical and beautiful like that, right? It is. I don't know. I think it's a nice touch, and it gives the dial a little bit, a little bit of depth. It's a cool looking how watch. Do you, how do you set this? How do you do? You look at the moon one night, and you're like, okay, I'm going to dial it into. So you can Google moon phase calendars. Yeah. <laughs> Even though I'm, I'm not going to lie to your audience, I've never once set the moon phase. Yeah, no. This is okay. So this is cool. H Moser. So I'm gonna. So if you say nobody really knows about it, they make two. Th if they make two thousand watches a year, mm -hmm. I'm saying they're at least probably charging five grand minimum. No, much higher. Much. I'm higher. gonna say twenty. Much higher. Much higher. Twenty. 
Well, I've never seen anything like this. That's what makes so it so unique. This is it, one, wait, wait, what's it? What's this? Isn't white gold? No, this no, is stainless steel, stainless steel it's which light. is even yeah. more special because fine watches like this are rarely made in stainless steel. Why? Um, because gold is more noble, even though stainless steel is technically a better metal because it's harder. It doesn't scratch as easy. Mm. Uh, it looks newer, but it doesn't have the cachet of gold. Um, this one, this watch had a retail price of thirty-five thousand. Oh one of 50, what is it worth now? Um, no one knows because there's none for sale. If you wear a watch like that out, do people recognize no, the watch? Never. This one, I had no idea. I would look at this watch and think, oh, it could be a few grand. No one, no, no, one, no, idea. Ever, no one ever. Never. Um, a watch geek, Mike. Like, I've been stopped at Starbucks by like a fellow watch geek and, and they've been like, that's a nice Rolex, but it's the Rolex. It's not the Moser. What Watches. makes this 35 grand? Because I'm trying to look so, like the stainless steel. No. So two the band, things. No. Yeah. First, the movement. Okay. Um, which, if you look at the back, is all yeah. hand engraved, hand finished, fully in house. They actually use gold countersinks in the movement. It's just uh -huh. a level of detail is fantastic. Okay. Then the second thing is the dial is made entirely out of aventurine, which is a sparkling gemstone, um, which also is how how much special. does that sell for intrinsically. Probably a few hundred dollars, to be honest, yeah. honest with you. But it's not the intrinsic value of the stone. It's more the fact that if you want to watch with an Aventurine dial, there aren't really any. I mean, Very there's a cool. couple out yeah. there. But it's, it's so if, if I had to okay. tell you where the money is on this piece, yeah. it's the labor. The hours of Swiss trained labor that went into building it. Yeah. That's where I'll, the money is. I'll give you now cash right now. Seven grand. Absolutely not. <laughs> what are you doing? My job? Oh, okay. What are you, a watch dealer? What do you think I'm going to sell it to Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I will, I, I counter offer at 70. 70? Seven. Meet in the middle. I, I counter offer at 30. 10. What if I can <laughs> meet in the middle? <laughs> <laughs> what all right, kind meet of the middle. middle is that? Nine. Deal. No. Nine, good. Uh, all right. So What's we're this? moving on to um, coffee uh, cup. So this is actually a gift for Graham. No. What is this? It's nothing that special. It's all actually right. a swatch. Uh, which is rare. It's a limited run swatch. Really? There are a few swatches worth a few thousand dollars. This is not one of them. Okay. <laughs> but it is a limited run swatch, oh. and I saw it, and it's got the coffee cup on it. I love this. Is this something that I should not be wearing because of it's it's old? Or like well, it's from the 90s, but I liked it because it came with the full kit. You've got the original price tag. Wow. You've got the original box. Oh, I shouldn't wear this um, then. I would keep this as is. Okay. As like a collectible. I was trying to think like if I put this on the second channel, like wear it, but it's so perfectly preserved. I, I don't want to. from Japan, actually. Wow. Thank, what was the original price on this? Uh, probably like 50 bucks. Wow. But I just saw it, you know, the 20 cent coffee thing. You know, I'm a, I'm a fan of your channel and had the coffee cup. I thought... Like, it was pretty funny. I'm like, this, I is, love this is pretty this. funny. I love this. Thank you. <laughs> no, it's my pleasure. I love this. <laughs> Can I see it? And that yeah. goes to show, guys, you don't have to be wow. a millionaire. I know we're talking like crazy numbers right now. You don't have to be a millionaire to love watches. There are some great watches for a few hundred bucks, even less. I mean, in the big boy leagues, yes, they're thousands wow. of dollars, but... Anybody can enjoy What would you recommend for people with under $1,000 right now to spend who want to get into the watch game, but our audience is really price sensitive sure. and wants something that is going to hold its value so or go up So usually under watches in that price point don't hold value very well. However, buy pre-owned, which you will retain better value. And I say like a collectible Seiko, like a Seiko, if you can put up a picture, like a Seiko Tuna or mm -hmm. a Seiko Turtle. Iconic watches, four or 500 bucks. Um, you should be able to sell it for pretty darn close to what you paid for it. If you want to go Swiss, you don't have many choices, but like a Hamilton, you know, pre-owned Hamilton. If you buy a new Hamilton, you just lost 70%. But a pre-owned Hamilton is a nice Swiss watch that should hold value decently. Okay. Rolex Explorer. Should we talk about it? Uh, yeah, pick it up. All right. I like, you know what? I think those watches um, are undervalued. I think uh, they're underappreciated, and I think they're a solid watch for, what, six grand, I'm guessing? Yeah, I'm yeah. not going to say undervalued anymore, uh. because this watch, two years ago, it's a Rolex first-generation 36-millimeter Explorer. I was selling for, like, $4,000, um, but now with the full kit, the box, and papers, this one just sold this morning, so it's not available. 
uh, for sixty eight hundred dollars. Sixty eight hundred. Sixty eight hundred, and it's gone up as you saw twenty eight hundred dollars in about two years. That's wow. really good. That's a good ROI to go from four to six. Yeah. No but once yeah. again, this is the crazy market we're in right now. Mm-hmm. I don't recommend any of your viewers there you go. do it just to do just to make an ROI. Yeah. I think an index fund, as you say, yeah, is a much safer investment. But it's a great hobby. Yeah. Where you can have a ton of expensive fun and not lose. Okay. I think that's like the key, yeah. in my opinion. It's a game you can't lose, like a blackjack. Blackjack, yeah. We, you we can't had blackjack lose. gambling last night. We all so did I. We, did you win? Absolutely not. Really? Oh, no. oh, we I, we did so well. So I I put in two hundred, walked away with like five fifty, but I only played a hundred. I, I, I kept 100 aside the entire time. So I turned 100 into like 300 and something in profit. No comment. We got lucky. I was down. I was down uh, about 70 bucks and then just hand over hand over yeah. hand. Doubling, win, double, win. It's just every hand, like seven, eight You're hands You're a money-making machine, And then as man. soon as the deck ended and they started reshuffling, we're like, no, this is it. Cashed Let's just out. say this. I hope this video sells me some watches because yeah. last night was painful. How much do you lose? Yeah, not, not, you know, enough. How much? Like over, over a grand? Just about. That's the, okay. That's a, well, we're, we're used to people losing like tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, but like I'm, I am down 30 gambling. grand today. I'll play a little bit more. I got, I got profit. Today? I got, yeah, I'm going to throw my profit. Oh my, my gosh. This is starting into a habit <laughs> yeah, now, it's huh? Fun. Right. It's a I social thing. I would never have taken you for a gambler. Love it. Oh, yeah, God. I love it. Listen. He only likes it when he's winning. I, I had, I have a $300 <laughs> limit. That's that's always how much I'll go in with and lose uh, in like a whole weekend. That's it, three hundred bucks. Most I would say it's a fifty fifty. Mm-hmm. I'd say it's just like this. I don't lose in the long run because if you play correctly, I'll win a hundred, I'll lose a hundred. I'll win a hundred, I'll lose a hundred. Sure, sure, sure. So long term, I'm probably break even, but I have so much fun and it's a good like stuff. I, I have a great time. That's long what term. It's entertainment, and I don't. I'm not making stupid bets. But I'm, I'm probably I mean, even overall. I'll put it this way. After losing last night, which was a little painful, yeah. me and my brother went to Carbone and easily doubled our loss on a fantastic dinner. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just... It doesn't it, it, I woke up and it didn't even matter anymore. No, it doesn't matter. I mean, it matters. It's a lot of money, but like, I'm over it. Yeah, it there we go. All right, let's see what's in here. Oof. Is that alligator? Uh, that is a cost, custom-made ostrich. Watch ostrich. Ah, uh, that's ostrich. Yep, you're right. Jack, th- come up, uh, describe it, and uh, say how much you think it's worth, and then I'll give my guess. Yeah, what do you think is the retail price of that watch? Okay, so the name of this watch... Try to pronounce it. What is? I don't know what it is. Is a Tourbillon 30 seconds. 30. That's the function, not the name of the watch. What's the name? We're close. It doesn't have any labeling on it. Uh, it's got a B on it. Oh, you're right. It doesn't have a... Breitling. No. <laughs> yeah, that's not I Breitling. love it. Oh, no, you're right. It has no name. It has the name on the back. Oh, okay. Let me... Uh, let me it should have the name on the back, okay. at least. This is called a 30, old, 30, 30 jewels adjusted five positions. <laughs> <laughs> Why does this... Be- <laughs> yes, that's, that's what it's called. That's great marketing. It is department. called uh, 3.40 p.m. <laughs> it is a Parmigiani Fleurier Pershing Tourbillon. They only made 12 of these in the entire world. Um... This one is brand new, not pre-owned, brand new. And how much How much would you say the retail price is on that? Okay, so it feels to me light. So it's titanium mm-hmm. and rose gold. Okay. But what makes it special is the tourbillon movement. <clears throat> All right, so I'm looking at tourbillon. So I know tourbillons minimum 50 grand. Yeah. So absolutely. minimum. Very cool feature. Uh... It's over. A, I'd say over. It's got to be only twelve. I'd, I would say probably one twenty. But Jack, you get you give a guess on that. Okay, basing off of the uh, the weight, the uh, structural <laughs> integrity, the integrity of the watch, of the, watch um, the complications. Yeah, the back looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna have to say one twenty five. So this bad boy carries an original oh, MSRP. Have Jack hold it as you're, as you're saying that. Let's see. An original MSRP of $243,000. Uh, 
Um, would you care to guess how much this watch is for sale at DelrayWatch.com? Brand new box and papers. Would you care to guess how much I'm selling it for? Brand new. You guess. One of 12. 255. Two, no, no. 300. If that's an offer, I'll take it. <laughs> Two. What is it? 220? I'm, I'm going to, my guess is, uh, it's minimum 50. So I'm going to say probably 70, 65. So I'm selling it for exactly $50,000. Ah, look 50, at that. 50,000. Which I think is basically the, yeah. Listen, you can think of this two ways. If you were the crazy guy who bought this at the Parmigiani boutique in Miami and paid full price, you just lost 80%. Of your money. Wow. Or if you're the crazy guy that loves this watch because it's unique, it's beautiful. They only made 12 and you want to buy it now brand new for me for 50, you just saved 80%. But why Why did this lose so much value and why is it just not nobody wanting it? It's not a bad watch. The watch is fantastic. Mm -hmm. It is all handmade. It's super exclusive. It's just a very small brand. Uh, I'll give you an idea. I know you're a car guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Spiker. I you love know, Spiker. I love Spiker too. They've been going up in value a lot though. Now they have, but why in the, in, when they were first out, why did no one buy them? You know, mm -hmm. why did no one buy uh, TVR? You know, that British yeah. car company. Mm -hmm. They're not bad cars. It's just nobody knew what it but was. But that was never really imported to the US. You have a few examples, yeah, sure. but that was never. So I think the TVR that we could maybe exclude that. Spiker, I just think they never made it. Well, I guess that's the same with this. They never made enough of them. They never made enough of them. Nobody knows who they are. They make two, 3,000 watches a year. They've got a crazy amount of collectors. Now, the real question is, hey, Federico, how did you get it for so cheap? Mm -hmm. The truth is it's a small company. They've got a very small amount of employees, and occasionally brands will call dealers and be like, we need to sell this you know, because every brand's got to pay bills. And I made them an offer, and they sold it to me. How many people paid full price for that, though? And the 12 sold, my guess is six. Mm. What is a tourbillon? Oi, uh, orological questions. Um, <laughs> we're going to need a whole bunch of diagrams to explain this one, but I'll do my very best. A tourbillon is a function of a watch, which should counteract the, gravi you know, the, the Earth's gravitational pull. So the watch works off a spring that rotates. The tourbillon puts that spring in a cage and rotates it once per minute, or in this case, twice per minute. So gravity, which is always pulling downwards, will affect that spring equally because the spring is turning. Wow. Mm -hmm. So essentially, it's a very, uh, it's a very high-end piece of engineering, That's which is cool. done through micro mechanics, which really brings up the price of a watch. Yeah, I've seen the AP tourbillons, and they're all like eighty grand, seventy grand. Those and are just some cheap tourbillons, yeah. So more than that now? Oh, much more. Really? They've gone up like, I mean, I guess so, some okay, of them the, are. The last time I checked are. prices were probably about a year ago. Some of them are, but if you want like the one everybody wants, like the concept turb, or, you know, quarter million dollars, no problem. Wow. I mean, you can get them. At, you, okay. you can, but yeah. it's just not. I'm looking at like, I, I go eBay, sort by least <laughs> least a high, and like I'm like, all right, that's how it is. <laughs> Got to be careful with eBay though. You right. buy the seller. That's okay, yeah. what I say. But. How do you charge one of these? To go. So this one you is plug it in. <laughs> it's got the AC adapter <laughs> right there. Got the USB <laughs> port. So this one is manually wound. So you turn the crown mm -hmm. and it's got a power reserve feature here, uh, which is eight days. So on a full wind, you'll have an eight day charge mm -hmm. on the watch. So every eight days, you wind it. A lot of people argue that it's just a rich person's toy um, because who really needs to counteract the effects of gravity in 2021. But and it's pretty that, cool to be doing that, that in your wrist. Do you know what I mean? You're that rich. You're like, I don't got time. Nobody got time for gravity. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Defy it. Literally got time for it. Okay. And then we got, I think, one last goodie here. And then you look at my collection. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I want, I want to show you this what I got. Jack. Is that oh, a Submariner? Yeah. No. Here's your watch. What, what's the dial? Black dial? Yeah. So this oh, is green. a Green. You got the Hulk. Green dial. Wow. Rolex Submariner. Green, green bezel, sorry. Can green dial and bezel. Oh, can I, wow. Can I see how this looks on my wrist? Please. So this is a watch I bought myself for my 29th birthday. Wow. Um, as I've said previously, I find Rolex to be a little boring, you know, yeah. a little common. 
But I saw the green on green, and I said, well, that's the most iconic watch in the world, the Submariner, with a little bit of that cash money pop. Yeah. So I decided, obviously, my wrist is way larger than yours, but... You know, it, it, it's, it's weird with the stainless steel and the gold ring. Yeah, that might throw... <clears throat> might throw it now a he bit. needs a gold Submariner. I think without the ring, or you put the ring on the other hand, did you put the, what's the significance of the ring on that hand? I made it. But why does oh. it need to be on that finger on that hand? I, I just like it a lot. You it's, can't put it on the so other hand. I, I, my dad's wedding ring. I, <laughs> yeah. I casted the exact same ring okay. out of the same gold. But you can't put it on the other hand. It's pretty stuck. I mean, I could probably figure out a way to like get it off, but it's pretty stuck. You okay. can laser it off. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Does that look <laughs> right to you? Look at how uh, my knuckle is like way. Yeah, I know. That's not. No. You don't. You can't. You just make that bigger and put it on the other hand. Mm, like it's cutting off the, your your hands growing around. <laughs> Like I'm, you know, like yeah, somehow know, like know, trees, like me. you have something around a tree, and the tree just kind of like grows. I kind of just figured out. this is a problem I'm for me. I'm not in the gonna future. lie, like, like as a jeweler, that doesn't look healthy. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. I, I, I honestly, saying. you might want to expand the size of the ring a little bit and put it on the other hand. I'll put yeah. it this way: if you fly, like get on an airplane with that ring, your finger might just explode. All right, I'll definitely look into this a little I'm bit. I'm not yeah. like I'm not even like as a friend. Like, get yeah. So out. okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. It's it's did not you, like I never I never paid attention to it, but now that now that you're showing that off, <laughs> I know. Well, I didn't want to bring attention to <laughs> it, but but, now, <laughs> but everybody look at his hand. But it's one of those things that like you never notice it until you point it out, and then it's all you can. <laughs> My see. knuckle is larger than the ring, like significantly. That's your body you, screaming for help. Yes. Honestly, to it. we're both telling you this. I, I've never looked at this until then. I'm not kidding with you. I would highly recommend resizing that, getting it taken off, yeah. expanding it a little bit. And I don't care if you put it back on the same finger, but make that ring a little bigger. Hey, yeah. Graham, I say yeah. it for you, buddy. How's this guy going to edit a video missing a finger? Yeah, that's no. true. Yeah. Listen, I like, I like the watch in you. I think, I think that's <laughs> the a watch is so great cool. Samariner. I think that's an awful example because I've got an eight inch wrist and <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. got a skinny right, wrist. But, so. but yeah, it's, it's, listen, it's a great looking watch. I went for the green just because nice you know yeah. and actually i bought it for eight thousand dollars wow and that's what worth 13 now 17. 17 because it was just discontinued beautiful watch the one watch that i really wanted that i didn't get that i'm regretting uh when they came out with the uh the daytona with the green dial oh yeah and then john mayer killed yes killed that. and and what had with that when that came out it reminded me for some reason of a craps table at las vegas with the mm. green felt and the green dial and I thought, gosh, that would be an awesome watch to get. And I just thought, you know what? It's too flashy, too For gold. You, maybe. Yes. But I loved the color combination of that watch. And uh, that was back when it was selling about 32, 33. And there were a whole bunch of them for sale. It's like, it's ah, almost double that now. Yep. Yeah. And uh, and I've realized now, anytime I've liked something to that point where I'm like, oh, that's a gorgeous wild. Like, I want that, but uh, I'm not going to get it. It always goes up every single yeah, time. See, what, think of it this way. I, I mean, know. I know I know your whole thing is you're extremely financially responsible. Yeah, and, I know. And you should keep that up because you're doing your viewers a great service. But in this case, wasn't it extremely financially irresponsible not to buy that Rolex? Yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah. Oh, same. Here's here's the, here's another example of just when I didn't listen to myself over this. Um, when I was like 22, 23, I really wanted the Zenith Rolex Daytona stainless oof. steel black dial, and those were selling for less money than the normal Rolex Daytonas. I didn't get it. I'm like, less. why does nobody want the Zenith? It was only made for like this is a rare watch. Why does nobody want it? I thought maybe it's just it's old and people just don't want that. And I wanted that watch, and those were selling about ninety nine hundred bucks, maybe about ten eleven thousand with box and papers. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, and I didn't get it because I thought, well, it's a lot of money to spend on ten thousand dollars, and now it's like thirty five forty grand for that same watch. Yeah, yeah. You see, yeah. This so. is guys. This all this means is you got to hit me up. You know, call me for your watches. Yeah. <laughs> and but now I'm trying to think like what I would buy now. Um, and yeah. I'm not really sure. Like, I'm looking at these watches. I don't see anything to me right now that really stands out as like, I got to get that watch. I'll tell you this. Yeah. I've, been, I've been watching you for a little while, yeah. and I've always realized you had nice watches. You, yeah. you never really point them out in your video, no. but 
right now you're wearing a classic retro inspired Zenith El Primero. Is no, this, this, actually, this, this is, is the retro one. Actually. Here, this, let me show you my watch. This so, is your grandpa's watch. Yeah. If you told me correctly. Yeah, this yeah. is it. Yeah. So this is the original 1969 Zenith El Primero. It was never worn before me. And it was just kept you, in a in a box. Yeah. This is one of the nicest examples by far. Thanks. That I have ever seen. Yeah, when I took it in, so I took it into I, I found a vintage Rolex forum online when I found this watch. I posted it up there. Everyone is telling me, dude, take it immediately. There's a there's a, a a person who services Rolex watches downtown LA. I took it to this guy. He was floored with the original box. Um, no papers, but had the original box, original strap. This guy said this watch was flawed. He had never seen an example like this before. This is one of the nicest ones I've ever seen. Yeah. Honestly, it's beautiful. Yeah. And I also know you have a Panerai. Yes, I do. I didn't bring it. Okay. But well, yeah. I love that Panerai. Thank you. Yeah, that was, uh, I've had that watch for a while. And, uh, but yeah, this is, uh, this is watch number one. And this is one of those things, honestly, I've, I beat this watch, unfortunately. And I've scraped, you could see in the right light, I've scraped the, uh, the crystal. front, the crystal on this, and uh, you but can you know what? Get that polished out. Yeah, but this is one of those things where I don't want to keep this watch pristine. It's like this is one of those watches where I feel like I just got to wear it, and I love it. The and only this is thing like, I'll tell you is just yeah. keep that away from water. Oh yeah, like keep it away from like the pool, the shower. Oh, I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any You'll moisture, like I'm not going to take it to the beach or anything like that. But uh, but I wear this around. This is by far the watch I wear the but most it often. Should be that's how it should be. I mean, I, yeah. there's nothing worse to me, honestly. It's a little bit of a rant. Somebody who spends Can they grab me the box a ton yeah. of money on a watch yeah. and then doesn't wear it. What's the point? That's yeah. why, Jack. When you get your sub, please wear it. Like yeah. that's that's a. a must. I will say, yeah. I don't. I. I this is. Whoops, hold on. Okay, so this is the Whoa. other Rolex. Okay, this is a 36 millimeter date just current generation fluted blue dial. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be honest, this is um, this is just a fantastic watch for every day. Yep. There's no occasion where this does not work. Mm -hmm. You can wear this to the sauna, to the beach, or you can wear it on a suit. It's extremely classic. White gold dial. Oh sorry, this bezel. White gold bezel. Is the best part. Okay, this is the yeah. best part of the watch. Yep. Guys, it's engraved. I don't know if they, they can see this. If you put B-roll, it's engraved with 2 million subscribers. Yep. Um, which, apart from your grandfather's watch, yeah. which is always going to be number one, this has to be the most special watch in your collection just for this that. This was a gift. It was a gift. Yeah. Grant Navarre, um, I think you might meet him later. He'll probably come out with us oh, if you wow. want to meet him. Because Absolutely. He brought his watch collection, by the way. He's got a gnarly watch He's collection. He's got an as insane well. watch collection. So um, you'll meet him. He got me that as a gift. When I hit 2 million subscribers, he sent me this. That is an incredible gesture. Yeah. And this is why, when you get your sub, you want a milestone because you're going to have this forever. Oh, yeah. And it's going to mean something forever. And he got you a watch, which is honestly wearable on any occasion. Mr. Navarre has fantastic taste. Yep. Yep. So this, I love the blue dial. Oh, he also. Got me a Mont Blanc pen that matches. Get out of here, really? Yeah. This guy's detail-oriented. Yes. Like oh, extremely. But yeah, this is one of those pieces that like you pass down. Like this, These are like, uh, like we were talking tattoos the other week, and I was like, I, I don't have any tattoos. But for me, like these like, like big events or stuff like that, that happens to me, it's like you get a watch or you get something like this that you could pass down. So. And once again, it's not fiscally irresponsible because if done right, you're not technically out of the money. You're just parking it somewhere. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, then we got this. You know what's, I love that watch, but yeah. I'm also extremely intrigued by that box. So this is a solid rose gold remake of the mm -hmm. 1969 El Primero. Yep. It's got the same case profile. Uh, it's got the sapphire case back, so you can see the El Primero movement, mm -hmm. which is something that was never done back when your grandpa's watch was no. manufactured. I like it better in steel, but I love this to death mm -hmm. because you're obviously paying homage to your grandpa yes. by getting a new 50th anniversary, the, new, the yeah. new version. So you have the old and the new. You must be one of the few people on earth, one of the very few people on earth mm -hmm. that owns the old iteration and the new iteration yep. of the watch. Now, this is one. I mean, I would wear this for very special occasions. I wear this all the time. 
yeah, like gold is, is a little tougher for me to pull off all the mm -hmm. time and I, it looks good on you i've seen it in yeah. your videos but i don't know the, what makes it super cool to me is you have both I yes mean, that's what's so special right i thought about getting the white gold because they only did uh precious metal so they did yellow gold rose and white um i felt the white would have been too similar to that and would have looked like the same thing agreed i thought yellow gold oh wait no this is yellow gold sorry this sorry. is yellow yeah uh, I didn't, I thought the rose might have been a little too trendy, so I figured the yellow gold would be more of like a classic color. I mean, this is a very handsome watch. Look at that. It's that and, shines a lot. <laughs> That's what I have to yeah. say. But it's, it's still like a zenith. I mean, this is a watch geek watch. Yeah. If somebody stops you in the street and like, hey man, what's that watch? You say Zenith, they'll think you have a you know the TV company. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's it. The radio. Yeah. Um, but but no, I mean people that know Zenith makes one of the best and probably the most iconic chronograph movement, um, stopwatch movement for the layman uh, in 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 the watch world. Yeah. So this is something I just bought. The guy was going through some financial difficulty. Those so, are usually the best deals. <laughs> sold it to me at like half price cash. So I'll let you do the honors. All right, let me see. Put that right there for now. So. Get out of here. Yeah. So oh, I picked man. this up for like 20 something thousand cash. You stole it. Yeah. Guys, this is. Am I taking this box? I don't want to drop yeah. it. Sure, yeah, yeah. So this is a Rolex Day Date, nicknamed the President, with the green dial. Uh, also made extremely famous by John Mayer. Um, usually solid gold Rolex doesn't hold value extremely well, mm -hmm. generally. This is a major exception to that rule. This style is sold out everywhere. Um, it's a little flashy, but it's supposed to be. Like, yep. That's the whole purpose of this watch. And uh, it's just, it's a Try beauty. Try it on. I mean, this, mind holding this for a second? This is not real. <laughs> Why did you break so easily, Graham? You broke this isn't so real. easily. Oh, I couldn't. I couldn't hold back. Okay, <laughs> but I will tell you how long did it take me to spot that? How long? I mean, I was okay in my mind. I was telling Jack I was preparing for this. Oh yeah, I made the dial pretty, uh, pretty small. In my mind, I was gonna pretend to be like not knowing it was fake and you were supposed to tell me like oh this my isn't god this we isn't planned real. that out so much i planned this out i couldn't i could you saw, i was breaking early yeah, yeah. i like put my head down i, I, I as didn't as you, even notice yeah that. yeah as soon as you as soon as you took it out and <laughs> did I say, but okay the plan was <laughs> that uh that i was gonna pretend it was real and you're gonna be like no it's not real and i'm like yes it is <laughs> i paid 30 big cash <laughs> for it <laughs> and we we're supposed to have like a full on oh, scene here. Yeah. You ruined it. Uh, you ruined it. <laughs> okay, I'm just proud that I don't look awful on camera being a professional yeah. watch dealer. And I'm just proud that like I caught it. Yes, That's all I want. Because I was to. worried you were holding it, talking about it, and I'm like, it's a light watch. You're not gonna know until you take it off. Because it looks good. Listen, yeah. from this far away, I'm not gonna lie, it looks okay. Yeah. But you take as it off and it you... feels like <laughs> crap. Like, it really does. Um, uh, I, I, I am so disappointed in myself. I was going to play it out and, like, have, like, I can't believe, yeah, are you serious? Yeah. Like, yeah, no, I know no. I like, well enough <laughs> that you would have never bought something like this for yourself. <laughs> I, okay, so, fun, <laughs> I did want this watch, and I thought to myself, uh, before I spend the money on the real thing, I'm going to get a replica version wear it for a little bit, see if I like it. And then if it wears off, I'm not going to buy the real thing. Sure enough, I got this, wore it maybe a few times just to see what it's like and uh, lost uh, lost the appeal. But I love the watch. Fair enough. I mean, listen, it's a yeah. beautiful watch. It's just not very grim yeah. in, my, in yeah. my opinion. I love the green dial. The all you green are really going to punk me yeah. on, on your channel <laughs> yes. right now? Is that, was that, is that the plan? Yeah. F invite me all the way to Vegas, <laughs> make, make me schlep all the way out here, and you're going to punk me live? Yeah, it was we were try. so excited for that, But you too. were quick. You yeah. were quick to spot it. That would have been even worse, though. 
And he did it. How bad like, was this? this is kind of incredible. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love this watch. Wow, you got such a deal. Here you go. But then I would have thought, too, you were just being polite. Like, you didn't want to tell me it was fake, like, on camera, play along. I thing. mean, honestly, like, when you told me how much you paid for it before I held it, I was prepared <laughs> to make you an offer. I'd be like, I'll pay you 30. <laughs> like, <laughs> I will yeah. not pay you. 30. It would have been worse. It would have been worse had you not caught it that quickly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you guess how much it was? Seventy bucks. No, no, no. The, okay, real realistically. Realistically, how much do you think that replica is worth? I mean, it's worth nothing. How much did you pay for it? Yes. So you got a Swiss Edda replica. It feels like like it's got a Swiss movement. Yep. I mean, on the replica forums, must be like two hundred eighty, three hundred bucks, something like that. Yeah, I think it was about three. 50 okay with shipping and everything 350 so listen, yeah here's the thing yeah the the head looks great it's just a bracelet yep. which I feels agree. awful it's the uh yeah that being said i don't condone um you know <laughs> i'm just i don't condone it but yeah listen it's it could, it could be worse <laughs> I appreciate the fact that you just said like this is fake like immediately like you didn't even consider like shoot should I not say this in yeah. front of Graham but like <laughs> yeah it's, I it's would be reflex. very careful I yeah. would just look at it and like, oh, you know good like, watch oh, this, this is nice this is nice and hand, hand it back immediately like the less yeah. I, I no time handling yeah, it but I do this for yeah. a living you know when people call me every day and send me pictures <laughs> and walk into my office and like yeah, you're right. I probably should have been more polite. But like, it's a reflex for Christ's sake. But I started laughing too quickly, which that's my fault. Yeah, yeah. You should take this to the M and see if anybody will give you like a marker against it. So I, th I think let's, uh, how long are we on the podcast? We're at 90 minutes, so no, okay. we're good. But I do have a couple yeah. questions. Just like please, yeah. please, please. So what was the first watch that you got? The first watch I got or the first um, like high-end watch I got? The first watch you got, yeah. The first watch I got was called a Swatch Beat. Okay, it was a digital watch where Swatch actually invented this new thing called internet time. So that it, it's a new way of telling time where the time would be the same all around the world. Mm. Obviously, it didn't take off. This was in the late 90s. I got it when I was like 10 years old on vacation. Um, very, very cool, like digital watch. It actually had a cartoon for some reason. If you held on the button for too long, it had a cartoon of a dog peeing on a lamp. I'm not sure where mm. that even... I, I don't even know why that was a thing. Okay. But yeah, it was the Swatch. A uh, Swatch Beat? Beat. B-E-A-T? Yeah. B-E-A-T. -E cool. Um, so what was your first luxury watch that you my got? My first like luxury watch that I spent my own money for uh, was an IWC Ingenieur Blue Dial, uh, a watch I actually just recently sold for my collection. Why would you sell something that has so much sentimental value? Eh? Because it had sentimental value. And, and I, here's the thing. I agree with sentimental value as I just give you the whole spiel about yeah, sentimental right. value. But at the same time, I make a YouTube show about watches. I sell watches. I touch watches every day. I want to experience as many watches as possible. And I don't have the financial ability to just keep buying and buying and buying and buying and not selling. Um, I have the memories. The memories will be with me forever. Um, you know, I've made videos about it. Those will live forever or as least as, as long as YouTube survives. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I'm always connected with that watch. But unfortunately, these are expensive items. And sometimes I just have to make, you know, the executive decision and, and you know, make way for other things. And how much did you buy it for and how much did you sell it for? So it was $9,000. I got an employee discount for 5000 because I was working in the watch industry. And I sold it for forty eight hundred. That's a pretty good deal so to I have a watch for so long. Two, I lost two hundred bucks. <clears throat> yeah, not bad. And um, how many watches do you currently own? Uh, this is going to sound so pompous. I actually don't know. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure I could figure it out if I wait. If I do the mental math, mm -hmm. but I don't actually have. I actually don't know. <laughs> Somewhere between like eight and twelve. Okay. Do you ever wear non expensive watches? Occasionally. Occasionally. I mean, yes, because there's some that I just genuinely like. Mm -hmm. Like, I love my Seiko. I have a Swatch that I love. But at the same time, when I have the ability to wear all these beautiful things you might as well. that I've worked so hard of, then, I mean, I consider myself relatively humble. I mean, I know what matters in my life. So, you know, why do I have to pretend, you know, a lot of people say, well, how could you wear that around? How could you put 10,000? Because... Because I enjoy it and because I can and because, you know, it's, um, you know, it makes me feel special. What can I say?
how do you think the popularity of watches will hold up in the next 30, 50, 100 years? I think watches are no longer tools, unfortunately. People don't need them. Uh, it all depends how, how much people want them. The watch market seems to be growing, thankfully, um, particularly the vintage watch market. I think millennials are starting to think watches are cool, um, not for their utility, but because they're considered retro. Like mm -hmm. Even a new Rolex is like retro tech. <clears throat> yep. And just like retro gaming is making a huge comeback, I can kind of see watches falling into that kind of cool factor uh, as well. You know, that's yep. what I think at least. Where would you recommend buying a watch? Now I know you're obviously, yes. you know, you're, but what do you think about buying watches on eBay and Chrono24? I think uh, that can be a great and an awful idea at the same time. You got to remember, eBay's not selling you the watch. Chrono24 is not selling you the watch. Some guy who posted it on eBay and posted on Chrono24 is selling you the watch. You don't know that guy. Um, if you have no idea about watches and it's your first watch, buy from a trusted source, you know, buy from a retail store, pay full price on your first watch or buy pre-owned maybe for me or somebody else that you trust. Trust mm -hmm. is number one. If you're like me and or like you and, and you know watches really well, then sure, go on eBay, go on Corona 24, get a good deal. But you remember, it comes with inherent risks. There's fraud, there's payment processing issues. If you're ready to potentially deal with that, which I am, mm -hmm. um, you know, I am because I know what I'm doing, then go for it. But I don't recommend anybody's, anybody's first or second watch purchase be on a marketplace. What if it comes with box and papers? How much does, does that not matter? Can you swap it matters, internals and- it, it matters because papers are worth, make a watch worth more. But just like the Chinese can fake a watch, or Chinese can fake papers, mm. or, or you know, wherever the fakes are made. I mean, papers are worthless unless you can verify. Like to me, papers are worth everything because I know what a fake pair of Rolex papers looks like. But if papers should not make you feel safe. <laughs> so now since I like I work in YouTube and stuff like that, mm -hmm. whenever I'm browsing YouTube and I see YouTube videos, like I'm constantly analyzing the thumbnail and the title. It's just something that like in the back of my mind, I'm fixated on. Sure. When you enter a room full of like people, or if you're at a party or something like that, or if you're at the casino, are you constantly looking around first and just buying watches? First thing I see. Mm. It's just subconscious. It, it, it's no work. It's just, I look at people's wrists. And you identify everything. Just like, okay, got it. Usually, yes. Can you spot fakes? How, how often do you spot fakes when you're at the casino? Um, or just more, out More and about? often than you'd think. Okay. Like, I mean, let's say this, this, this <laughs> let's say my watch. Yeah. If, if I were this far away from you, I'd say, would no, you be able to, you would? I'd say from a distance, no, but as soon as I touched it. Okay. From a distance, no. Okay. But it's a relatively good fake. Cool. You know, there are others yeah. that, um, mm. you know, there's, there's some pretty bad ones. Usually it doesn't have to be off the wrist for me to yeah. spot it. How often do people try to come to you with a fake, trying to sell it to you or trying to pass it off as real? I mean, it happens a couple times a month okay. and it's always with some story that, you know, oh, my grandfather left this to me and I don't know what it's worth. Or my friend, it's always a story. Like, I got it from this guy and I want to sell it. I'm like, okay. Like, mm. And I, you know, I don't tell them it's fake because it's I'm not trying to get into an altercation, you know, with them because people get upset. Yeah. So I always say, you know, just take it to Rolex, have it authenticated and come back with the papers. That's yeah. like my yeah. way of saying, yeah, like, yeah. got it. Come back. Yeah. You know. What is your all-time favorite watch and your all-time least favorite watch i don't have an all-time favorite watch because it changes daily i'm sure that yeah you wouldn't whatever sells no, um, I'm kidding. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> give me your money uh, smart answer yeah um, most overrated or just like least favorite watch most overrated this is gonna sound awful oh i know what you're gonna say is rolex no, oh, oh i think rolex makes a fantastic no. watch they make a great watch great watch mm. but it really is like the level of like cultism that follows yeah. that brand i'll tell you mine. i don't understand but it's not i'm not saying it's a bad watch i just think it's just so crazily hyped mm -hmm. um but I think the, the brand I like the least, like one I wouldn't like wear. I know because you talk about it all the time. Um, I mean, there's always a brand from a watch I'd wear. I don't love most Tag Heuer's, um, even though I, there are a few that I would. What, what, what is the brand I talk about all the time? Hublot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I used to own a Hublot. Yeah. I used to own a Hublot. Uh, but, you know, yeah, Hublot. Uh, <laughs> 
It's not for me. To me, that is, I would I say, my it. least. I don't even remember them as a watch brand. And to me, I would say that's my least favorite brand of watches is generally Hublot. Uh, one, the, I, I th- one of the biggest reasons I don't like them is because every watch they have is limited edition. But yeah. when everything is limited edition, nothing then nothing is. is. Yeah. Uh, the other thing with Hublot is I feel like they have replicated AP a little bit too much yeah. in their design and, and aesthetic. And... Um, but for half the price, and their the resale is terrible. And I'd say just for resale alone, is terrible. They'll last twenty k, and you then you find the same watch for like eight. Same thing. A brand I'm <laughs> starting to dislike. Mm-hmm. Great watches, but I'm starting to really dislike is AP because everything's the mm. same. It's all the same. It's like a hundred years of the same, the same Royal Oak, Royal Oak, mm. Royal Oak, Royal Oak Offshore, Royal Oak Safari, Royal yeah. Oak Ultra Thin. It's like guys like beating the dead horse yeah. and. I have nothing bad to say about them apart from their lack of originality because they hold value well. They're beautiful watches. They're extremely well made. But like, let's change it up. And then they made the Quote 1159, which is their new release, mm-hmm. and everybody just hated it. What do you think? Last, last one. Patek. Love them. Um, love them. I think they run the risk of being a little complacent with their production. I think there are finer watches in the world than Patek. They are not the best watch in the world. But, you know, just genius marketing, fantastic products, history, second to none. Um, they make sports watches, they make dress watches, so they make something for everybody. I mean, I will own a Patek in my life. Mm-hmm. I will own one. Um, the one I really want. Here's, here's one that's about to go up in value because I've wanted this watch for a while, the Calatrava. The old, the, the, That's old, the yeah. best value. Yep. So, There's sub 20K, yeah. which doesn't make any sense to me because it's a Patek. It's so simple. It's so elegant. It's beautifully designed. And I think it's one of the most classic watches out there that's a Patek under 20. Unbelievable value. Let me value. tell you. Let me give you a piece of, let me give you, Mr. Mr. Graham, yeah. Stefan, a piece of advice here. Go on. Financial advice. Buy one. It, they're at the lowest they've ever been. Why? And they're at the lowest ever will be. Why? Because it's not trendy right now. But they've been, okay, so true. But they've been at that price from when I started looking at Patek. I've had my eye on one of those. And and unlike any other, like the Rolex Daytonas mm-hmm. and the Zeniths, and everything else has gone up except for that watch. But it's not going to be like that forever. Mm. But it will go up. It is a great watch. It is special. Will it go up? Will it take a little bit of time? Sure, but I don't see them. Could I, you? I can't see it going any lower. Could you find me one? Because because yeah. otherwise I'd go on eBay. And I mean, listen, yeah. if I can't if I if I can't find you one, at yeah. the very least, I can tell you which one to buy that okay. I don't have. Really? I mean, I'll do that f- for fun. Okay. You know, it's like a friend thing. Uh, I'm I I would take a look. I would buy Calatrava. I would do that. I think it's a fantastic watch. I think I'd it's. Like, I wish don't I could, own anything yeah. like it. No, I wish I had a milestone to like uh, three million three subscribers. Million subscribers. Hundred hundred thousand. Every million on subscribers, the, you get like a new watch for your collection, or a hundred thousand subscribers on the podcast. On the podcast, yeah. Oh, your cele- <laughs> you're just cele- making up your stuff. celebration is me getting my submarine. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and then now everything is a milestone. How about a milestone, like, Federico coming to Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll do that. I would get that watch. I mean, I'm just. It's just there's no there's no. You're never going to get it cheaper. In my opinion, obviously, I don't have a crystal ball, but I don't think you'll ever get it cheaper than what it is right now. Okay. If, if, you, if you could bring me a watch under 20K on a good deal on a... On, on a, a Calatrava under 20K, yeah. you have the Well, choice. I mean, just like a, like a, good, a good deal with, with boxes, like a collectible watch that you feel, uh, preferably mm-hmm. box and papers, mm-hmm. that is good condition, that I could just wear. Here's what yeah. we're going to do. We're, yeah. we're going to hang out after this, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, we're going to talk and, okay. we're, and you're going to show me what style, what color travels you like Deal. and and we'll figure it out. We'll take it from there. I'll do it. Okay. That's Perfect. Right. Cool. And I'll, you know what? If I, I'll if you it. buy it for me, if it happens that way, yeah. I'll hand deliver it to you. You what? I'll hand deliver it to Vegas. Okay. Deal. All right. Perfect. All right. I'll do it. I, 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 wow. I've, I've looked at this watch for 10 years. I've never bought it. And you're right. The price has not gone up on this watch. Um, it will eventually. I mean, worst case scenario, it's gonna it hold. Stays, I mean, it stays the it's same. been at this. Yeah, I mean, it. These watches are like thirty years old, twenty years old, and they've just the same. Mm-hmm. Maybe plus or minus like two percent, but okay, deal. All right, cool. perfect.
Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. This was probably one of the most insightful because I'm so curious about it. And uh, it's just, this is something I've just been genuinely interested in, but I've yet to talk to anybody at length about watches before. So, guys... Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to link to your information down below in the description. Thank you for having me. It's not sponsored or anything like that, but if you if you want anything watch related, uh, this is your go-to. Don't, even, don't yeah. even don't even put the shops link. Just put my YouTube channel. There you go. Just the YouTube channel. You could find the shop link on your YouTube on my channel. YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> we you talk about it nonstop. If you really yeah. want to, you have the option. But All yeah, right, this there is we go. Sponsored. Also, make sure to add us on Instagram. Uh, make sure to get your four free stocks. Have you done that? Have you gotten your four free stocks on Weeble? Uh, we're actually gonna do that right after this. Deal. Okay, so you'll get your four free stocks on Weeble. Uh, you'll have you signed up for Yada Savings? Yeah, no, I haven't. Okay, and also sign up for Yada Savings. And uh, with that said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Oh, you got to subscribe before not yet at 100K. If you made it to this point, you haven't subscribed yet, just do it. It's easy, it's free, and uh, we'll be at 100K any any moment now. So I could get that Calatrava. And uh, with that said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Take care. Cool. What's up, you guys? It's Federico. Uh, welcome back to the 36th sixth ever. So you need the ever. Ever. Episode of the Iced Coffee Hour. And so far we have made, and then just say that number. But really quick, you guys, we have a word from our sponsor, Audible. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment, audiobooks, and they recently added podcasts. I'm someone who values constantly learning new things, and Audible is an amazing platform that offers over 500,000 audio titles. Audible offers spoken word entertainment ranging from celebrity memoirs and motivational speeches to original content from celebrity creators and thousands of binge-worthy podcasts. I'm way too busy right now to divert all of my attention to a book and read, so instead I just put on Audible when I'm doing my daily runs or in my car driving. I am currently listening to Misbehaving, which is a book by Richard Thaler on behavioral economics and its effect on us. I know I definitely would not have enough time to read this book if it weren't for Audible. And guess what, guys? You're in luck because right now you can get in on the President's Day event. You are getting in on one of the best offers of the year. It's only $9.95 a month for your first six months. When I signed up for Audible about eight months ago, I was paying way more than this. So if you want to check that out, visit audible.com slash iced coffee or text iced coffee to 500 500. It's as easy as that. Just text iced coffee to 500 500. Also, if you want more information, as always, check the description. And with that said, back to the podcast.